Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulil Kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a sunnatahu ila yumiddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again to another episode of your weekly Islamic chat show, Guest of the Week, coming to you from Sharjah TV. I'm your host, as always, Ismail Bullock. And today, inshallah, we want to talk about something that is a reality that Anybody who is watching this and anybody who will watch it, they are facing or they are in this situation and that is living this life. So we want to talk about the reality of the life that we live. Are we just here for fun? Are we just here with no real purpose? Or is there a bigger picture behind our existence and how should we be spending our life? And should we put all our trust and all our hope and all our effort in having fun in this life, or is there more to it? And to do this with me, inshallah, and discuss this with me, is Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So as I mentioned, we're in this world, that's obvious. But what is the, I mean, from an Islamic perspective, what can we say, what is the reality of this life that we live? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen, سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. When it comes to uh, the reality of this world, Allah عز وجل in the Quran, when He described this world, He described it as something that's hasty. This dunya is something that's going by fast. It's not something that's going to remain. Allah says, من كان يريد العاجلة عجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد. ثم جعلنا له جهنم يصلاها مذموما مدحورا ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا كلا نمد هؤلاء وهؤلاء من عطاء ربك وما كان عطاء ربك محذورا انظر كيف فضلنا بعضهم على بعض ولا الآخرة أكبر درجات وأكبر تفضيلا In this آيات الله سبحانه وتعالى With the beginning of the آية الله says من كان يريد العاجلة Anyone who wants this hasty in the world. So Allah referred to the dunya as what? Ajila. So something that's really quick and passing. Yeah, that goes past fast. Has no real permanent value. No, it doesn't. In another ayah, Allah wa ta'ala, He says, that came after, Unzur kayfa faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd, walal akhiratu akbaru darajatin wa akbaru tafdila. That the akhira has greater stations. And the akhira is more gracious and more beneficial and for the people. بَلْ تُؤْتِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Allah referred to the Akhira two characteristics. خَيْرٌ is better وَأَبْقَى and it's going to remain forever. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah says in the third ayah سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَ وَمَا هَذِي الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ Ibn Kathir said here that this world is only a time of joy and amazement. That's all it really is. Allah then says, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ What does it mean, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ That the hereafter, لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ What does it mean? Ibn Kathir, رحمه الله, he said, it means, الْحَيَاةُ الدَّائِمَةُ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي لَا زَوَالَ لَهُ وَلَا انْقِضَى بَلْ هِيَ مُسْتَمِرَّةٌ أَبَدَ الْآبَاتِ He said, رحمه الله, he said, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيْوَانِ means الْحَيَاةُ الدَّائِمَةُ الْحَقُّ It is the life that is consistent and is continuous and it will forever remain. And he goes and says, رحمه الله تعالى بَلْ هِيَ مُسْتَمِرَّةٌ It will carry on أبد الْآبَاتِ forever. وَلِذَلِكَ دَ آخِرَةٌ was going to remain forever. If you look at the lifespan of the Ummah today or if you look at the lifespan of the people in general, what is their lifespan? As the Prophet sallallahu said, أَعْمَالُ أُمَّتِ مَا بَيْنَ سِتِينَ وَسَبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ It's between what? 60 to what? 70. وَقَلِيلٌ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ Little go over that. So it, you have to think about a world that you're giving precedence to, a world that you're valuing so much. How long are you really going to live in it? The most, the majority of the people live is 70. 60 to 70 people. It's quite funny because people often think, oh, that was in the old days and now we have good medicine and good technology. But at the same time, on the flip side of that, people eat much worse, so many processed foods, so much lack of exercise, many people do. So you find people are still not reaching those kind of ages because of the 
bad diets and so whatever you try and say that's reality still until now yeah. most yeah. people you know go between those those kind of ages and what's actually um, shocking is that the people who die young are more than those who die older the reality and the statistics show that the people who die young are more than those who die old but it's so uh, uh, shocking that we actually believe that we're going to live and we're going to reach an old age and that we're probably going to repent later and that we're going to come to Allah Azza wa Jal. How many people actually live even 70? You know, very little. As you mentioned, a lot of people are dying from you know, the lack of uh, uh, you know, fitness or people are dying from the food that they eat or, you know, and, and etc. Also, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he spoke about the dunya like, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke about the dunya like that, as we mentioned in those ayat, وَمَا كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ and بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا هَذِي الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهُونَ وَلَعِبَ When Allah described the dunya like that, it also became the Prophet's way. In other words, he وسلم, saw this dunya to be something that's going to go fast. When he was building it, or when he was digging the trench with his companions, he was saying with his companions, the hadith, Anas ibn Malik narrated في الصحيحين Bukhari and Muslim, اللهم لا عيش إلا عيش الآخرة فاغفر للأنصار والمهاجرة اللهم لا عيش الله there's no life except what except the life of the hereafter meaning وإن الدار الآخرة لا هي الحيوان that the hereafter is the real life and the Sahabas رضي الله تعالى عنه they adopted that concept and so they lived this world knowing something that's going to go by fast Allah says أمن هو قانت آناء الليل ساجدا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَرُ أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Allah mentions here the one who stands at night, he's praying and he's fearful of Allah Azza wa Jalla, hoping from Allah Jannah and then Allah says in there وَيَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ and he's cautious about the hereafter why is he cautious of the hereafter? because that individual knows and he's fully aware that the hereafter is the life it's the real life the Prophet told us in another hadith, Anas ibn Malik narrated for Sahihain as well, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, يَتَّبِعُ الْمَيِّتُ ثَلَاثَ The dead, يَتَّبِعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثَ The dead individual, three things go with him. أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَان وَيَبْقَى وَاحِد The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, three things go with the dead. Two come back and one remains. What is it that goes? with him to his grave. Three things. What are the three things? The first one is Ahlu, his family. The second one is Maluhu, his wealth. And the third one is his what? His uh, actions and his deeds. The Prophet then said, Uthnan, Two will come back and one will remain. In other words, it will remain with him in his grave. What is the one that's going to remain with him? The Prophet Sallallahu he said, Fayabqa Amaluhu, his actions is what's going to remain. So what's the action that's going to remain? An action that was built upon two pillars. What are the two pillars? Doing what you were told to do and staying away from that which you were told to stay away from. An action that was built upon sincerity. Doing it only for Allah's sake. And doing it as the Prophet Sallallahu did and what he said. That is the individual who, who would face in this world uh, or the hereafter, who would live the life of the hereafter. If you look at the Quran and you turn over the Quran, it always mentions also death which is the opposite of this life and how every single one of us is going to die. Allah says in the Quran, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Allah also says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ you know, those ayats, all of them are mentioning that every single person is going to die and pass away. That they're going to leave this world. To the extent Allah wa Taala tells us that there's going to come a day when everybody dies. And the only one that remains is Allah. Allah says, يَوْمَهُمْ بَارِزُونَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَحِيدِ الْقَحَارِ There's going to come a day when Allah asks, who is the king, who is the supreme, who is the most powerful? And there is not a person who is able to respond except Allah wa Taala. He's the only one who can respond, and so he responds by saying, "Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar." 
So death is hatmul lazimun. So it's, 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 it's something that's going to come. And this world, as I mentioned, is something that's going to go. Unfortunately, we see people, they act differently many times. They act like there is no afterlife and that this world is. You have that ridiculous saying, YOLO. YOLO. You only live once. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have that mentality. And that's actually something we often hear people saying. Do this, you only live once. Sure. I might as well do all of this because you only live once. When mm -hmm. the reality is, you only live twice. That's true. Meaning, and the, the second one is the hereafter. Uh, is the hereafter, and this is the more permanent, and this is the more important one. So this is a big uh, problem that people have taken on this mentality of now of like, you know, you only live once, so just do, man. Make the most of it, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. So there's a famous hadith, Imam al-Bukhari narrated in the hadith Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, this shows that when the person doesn't, he just lives this world. Like he just lives for this world. And he doesn't really understand there's another life. The Prophet said to us in this hadith, Ubadah ibn Samit narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ah. Wa man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa'ah. This hadith mentions, anyone who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet them. And anyone who dislikes meeting Allah, then Allah dislikes to meet them. Qalat Aisha aw ba'du azwaji. The narrator, he, he was doubtful. Is it Aisha who said this or is it some of his wives? What did she say? Inna lanakrahu al-mawt. She thought that when the Prophet said, anyone who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And anyone who dislikes meeting Allah, Allah dislikes meeting him. He, she understood Aisha radiallahu anha or whichever wife it was. They, they understood it as... Um, it's that we hate death. She said, Ya Rasulullah, inna la nakrahu al-mawt. We all dislike like death. We don't like it. And then the Prophet Sallallahu he said to Aisha, or whichever wife it was, he said to her, the issue isn't that. Lakin it is the believer, idha hadar al-mawt, when death comes to him. Wa bushira bi ridwani Allah, and he's told about Allah's, you know, the glad tidings that are waiting for him. And the good that's going to be on the other side for him. What does he do? You know, and he's told well, Allah's mercy is going to come on him and the honor that's going to await him. What does he do? You know, Ahabba liqa Allah. He, he's very happy to meet Allah now. Okay. And Allah is happy to meet him. And the opposite is the disbeliever and the wrongdoer and the criminal who believed on this concept that you just mentioned, YOLO, you, you only live once. Who didn't live for the hereafter, who only lived for this dunya. He only, this was all of it for him. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا هُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ He only knows this dunya and he's ignorant about the hereafter. This individual, when he, the angel of death comes to him and he's told about the adab and the uqoba uh, that awaits him, the punishment and the destruction that awaits him, you know, kariha liqa Allah, he doesn't want to meet Allah. And Allah doesn't want to meet him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know when we're going to die. We don't know when our time is going to come, when we're going to pass away. We're unaware of it. وَمَا كَالَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابًا مُؤَجَّلًا Allah mentions to us, that there is no soul that dies except that it dies at a pointy, appointed time. Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابًا مُؤَجَّلًا Every one of us, like we're dying at a, uh, at a written time. We don't know where it's going to be, what land we're going to die, what time we're going to die, in whose presence we're going to die, in what way we're going to die, we don't know. This is from the ilm al it's from the knowledge that we don't know of. And Allah is the only one who knows it. قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ We don't know when we're going to be resurrected as well. We just know that there's an angel of death who's been, you know, assigned to take our nafs. As Allah says, قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِلَ بِكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ I'll just hold you on that point and inshallah we're going to go for a break. Join us after this break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Now, Sadat Abdul Rahman, just before the break, we were, you know, we we're emphasizing that no one, no one knows what their time is. No one knows when that will happen, and no one has a guarantee that they will live for another minute or another year or another ten years. Now, I guess you could say then, people in this life, the the way they act towards this life, you could say they're different categories. So maybe we can go through some of those categories or the types of people who, how they view this worldly life. Now, so 
the way that a person lived in this world is what their last moments, it reflects of their last moment in this world and the way they're going to be. You see, as I mentioned before, we don't know when we're going to die. And one of the hikmah Ibn al-Qayyim mentions, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Ibn al-Raja mentions it, Sarajuddin ibn al-Qayni, Ibn al-Qayni, however you want to say it. He, they all mention that the person, he doesn't know when he's going to die because of the wisdom of coming with righteous deeds. Like you're always on your, this could be your last moment. The people who don't understand that concept, who manage to just um, enjoy themselves, go against Allah's commands, do as they want, this is a reflex of their last moments in this life. Meaning they don't die a good death. Allah Taala told us, "Oman adlam min man iftara ala Allah kadiban, aw qala uhiya ilayhi wa lam yuha ilayhi shayun, wa man qala sunzil mithla ma anzal Allah." Allah then says, "Subhanahu wa Taala, walo tara idh al mudrib, walo tara idh al zalimun fi ghamarat al mauti, wal malaika tu basitu aydihim, akhriju anfusakum al yoma, tujazoon aadab al huni bima kuntum taqulun ala Allah ghayr al haq, wa kuntum anayati tastakbirun." Allah is telling us here, and He's telling the Prophet. But al ibrah tabi ubu min lafi la bi khusus sabab. Even though it's the Prophet is being spoken to here, but it doesn't specifically mean him alone. It means everybody. Walau tara idhi zalimuna Muhammad. If you see the criminals, the wrongdoers, when like it. Walau tara idhi zalimuna fi ghamarat al maut. When they're in the agony of death. Wal malaika tu basitu aidihim. And the angels have spread their wings in them. And the angels then say to them, Akhriju anfusakum. Bring out your nafs now. You know, in other words, they can't do that. It's to belittle them. أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ تُجِزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ Today you're going to be punished with a severe punishment. Why? What's the reason? الْيَوْمَ تُجِزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ You said about Allah that which wasn't true. You attributed to Allah things that He wasn't. You lied about His religion. You lied about His righteous slaves. تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ وَكُنْتُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِي تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And when the verses of Allah were told and read unto you, you were arrogant, stubborn, hard-headed. You didn't want to take it. So those people, at that moment, Allah Taala tells us that they're going to what? That they're going to suffer. The consequences for them is serious. غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ Agony of death, pain. The opposite are the slaves who are righteous, upright. Allah says about them, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون. Allah tells us إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله those who said Allah is our Lord and when they said that it wasn't just a mere claim they didn't just say إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله that Allah is our Lord they didn't just say that Allah says ثم استقاموا they were steadfast upon that statement they lived by that statement we believe in Allah they lived by it. Istiqama is not what you and I interpret it. Allah tells us in the Quran, "Fastaqim kama umirta." Be steadfast as you were commanded. A lot of people you see them today say, "You know, I I I, I fear Allah in my own way, or I do it in my own way." And who are you to judge me? This is the way I do it. This means Allah knows my heart is good. What about ilah dalik? That's just istiqama on how you've personally perceived it. That's not the istiqama Allah wants you to come with. And also, it's interesting because you you mentioned about the heart. Everyone says, you know, look, yeah, I'm doing these bad things, these haram things, but I have a good heart. But we know that the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Allah in in the jisad mudra, mudra, sahih." Yeah, the salahat salahat jisad You know sahih. that in your body there is a morsel of flesh, meaning the heart. If it is correct and sound, like you say it is, don't look at don't look at my don't look at all these sins I'm doing, bro. Honestly, I have a really good heart. That's if that's the case, or what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said. Salah had just kulluhu that the whole body, meaning the actions you're doing with your with your body, will be good halal actions. So the reality is, even if you feel that you have a really good pious heart, you cannot have a really good pious heart and at the same time be doing really bad evil sins. There's definitely going to be some problem there. The, the, you know, you don't have that heart that you think you have. It's so true. Well, like Ibn Qayyim, Rahimullah said something. I had a discussion with one person once. I said to him, istiqama, even if we say hypothetically that your heart has steadfast, then why have you left the istiqama of the tongue, istiqama of your limbs, istiqama of your other parts of your body? Each part requires istiqama. So even if you did come with istiqama from the heart, and we do say you have istiqama in your heart, then you're missing the istiqama of your limbs, and you're missing the istiqama of your tongue. 
Ibn al-Qayyim says those are the three types of istiqama. And he said the most important one of them is the heart. And then he mentions the statement which is, وَكُلُّ إِلَاءٍ بِالَّذِي فِيهِ يَنْضَحُ Every vessel or you sweat what's inside it. If you want to know if a cold, the water is cold, you don't put your finger inside it. You can just find out if the water is cold from outside. You just grab it and you say it's cold water. Okay. But you don't need to put your finger into it. That is an indication to show that what's inside you will show on your limbs. It will be seen on your limbs. So Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ استقاموا, And they are steadfast. The aqwal that is brought, Ibn Jarir Tabari brings about, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ استقاموا, That are steadfast, is good to go back to it. Uh, the word istiqama, what he brings, that uh, Umar رضي الله عنه's statement, Abu Bakr, what he said about istiqama, that in, oh, Abu Bakr said istiqama means that you come with la ilaha illallah as it should be come, it should, it should be, uh, Abu Bakr, رضي, Umar رضي الله عنه, he said, لا يروغ روغال الثعلبي The person doesn't look around like the fox. In other words, he's just straight on the path. He's not getting distracted and he's not falling in shubuhat and shahwat. But then it's fascinating. What does Allah say after that? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ When they're on their moments of death, that last moment, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Angels will be descending on them. What would they say to them? Two things. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Two great mufassirin, two great scholars explain what it means. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا one is Abdullah ibn Abbas and one is Mujahid ibn Jabrin. What, do you know what they said? Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu means, they said Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu means, khawf means, don't be scared of these angels that you're looking at. Don't be scared of them. And because it's true, this person hasn't ever seen these angels before. It's the first time he's actually seen them. It's his first time he's encountering a creation like this. Uh, they say to him, Allah takhafu, don't be scared of us. We're not here to harm you. We're here to serve you. We're here to take care of you. As we used to take care of you in the dunya. As Allah said, لَهُمْ عَقِبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ That you were protected when you were in the dunya. Now you're being protected. Don't worry. We're here to protect you. Why are they going to protect you? Over there. Because of the hadith, اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَظْ اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ تَجِتُ جُجَاكَ إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَسَأَلْ لِحَدِي and Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he wrote a whole explanation on this hadith, Ihfadillah Yahfadka, in a kitab which he called it, Nurul Iqtibas, Fi Mishkati Wasiyat al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibn Abbas, something like that. So the angels say to you, don't be scared of us. Wala tahazan, what does it mean? Wala tahazan means don't be sad and worried and concerned for the children that you've left behind. You've left your children behind. You've left your wife behind. You've left, left, you've left your wealth behind. Don't be scared. Why? We're going to take care of all of that for you. With the command of Allah, we're going to take care of, care of, we're going to take care of all of that for you. This is an indication of the two parties. Allah says, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَبَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاصِطُ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ أَخْرِجُ أَنفُسَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى آيَاتِهِ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ These are the two parties. So we see on one side the, uh, the ones who were the wrongdoers or the, the ones who did not believe as they should, they will be receiving from the angels, you could say, tidings of, of punishment or bad tidings. Right. Whereas the ones who have this istiqama, this remaining steadfast, they will be, have, be, be given good tidings. Mm. لا from شك. the angels. I mean, there's a long, long hadith in Muslim Imam Muhammad, in hadith Bara ibn Azib, رضي الله تعالى عنه. It's a long hadith. Uh, Ahmed narrates in his Muslim, and Ibn Kathir brings it in his tafsir in the ayah, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخَرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ ظَالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Surah Ibrahim. He brings it there, Ibn Kathir. It's a long hadith when the person is, a, like the story of the two people who are departing. I mean, the two types of people who are departing from this world the believer, the mu'min, and the fasiq, how their situation both are, and the way that they are. So the truth of the matter is, uh, we have to all understand is, this world that we're giving all our heart to, we're giving our mind, we're investing everything, it's a place that's going to go. It's going to leave. This world you weren't brought here for you to put everything into it. You were brought into this world to be, as the Prophet ﷺ said to the companion Abdullah ibn Umar, 
كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل Be in this world as a stranger or a person who's crossing a road I was fascinated the other day because I was reading the kalam of Salajuddin Abul Qin I was reading his works and he said something very powerful He said that the companions were so spiritually invested and they were so connected to the hereafter that they walked away from the dunya they gave nothing to it they walked away from it and then Allah had to remind them and say to them wala tansa nasibaka min dunya don't forget your portion of this dunya because it was, Islam is, is for the idea of combining between materialistic and uh, spiritual together whereas you know modern western civilization is based all on what it's all based on materialism I mean, we always make that dua. Rabbana tana fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirah hasanatan wa qina azab an awla. Give me good in this life uh, and in the hereafter, and uh, so. save me or protect me from the punishment of the fire. So true. So no. there's this balance. It's true, and that's why Allah Taala He says in another ayah, "Tilka daru al akhirah." This is the this is the hereafter. What does Allah say? "Tilka daru al akhirah." Najaluha lil ladina la yuridun aluwa fil ardi wa la fasada wal aqibat lil muttaqin. Allah says, Tilka darul akhirah. That is the hereafter. That is Jannah. That is, you know, akhirah. Who have we made it for? Who owns the akhirah? Who has got it well in the hereafter? The one who has it is the one who didn't want in this world to be high and to be pushed up and to have the upper hand or to transgress on others. And he's just that simple, easy, humble person. That's the one who's going to receive the hereafter. And when he did it, Imam al in his kitab, Riyadh al-Salihin, at the beginning of his kitab, he mentions a very strong line of poetry. He says, Inna lillahi ibadan futana. Allah has righteous slaves. Talaqu dunya wa khafu al-fitana. They divorced his dunya. Like they looked at the dunya and they observed it. They rise, wise people. And they realize the reality of this dunya. And they divorced this dunya. And they feared fitna. But they realized one thing. When they realized that this world hasn't got a place for a righteous person. Has no room for them. What did they do? They used the whole dunya as a place to stack. Just to come with righteous deeds. And that's the truth. Today, the way I woke up. And the, where, where I woke up from and what I ate may be better than what you ate or maybe lower than what you had. No one knows. But we won't tell on our faces. We won't tell our, on our lives. So however simple you live in this world, a dry bread can quench your hunger. As much as a 10,000 pound restaurant can quench your hunger, both can. So uh, it's important that Wallahi we understand this dunya, the creator who owns it, he said, Law kadati dunya ta'adil indallahi jalaha ba'uda ma saqa minha kafir wa shurba tama. I'll just hold you on that point, inshallah. And we'll just go for this break. Join us after the break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Ustad Abdurrahman, just before the break, you mentioned that this world in the sight of Allah doesn't even equal to the, the wing of a, of a mosquito. You see, if, you know, iPhone, the owners of iPhone, Apple, um, they were to come out and say, look, Apple has a problem. And they were to put it down. And they said it's faulty. And they criticised it. App, they said it, and we don't like Apple, and Apple is bad. And if they were to say that, you know, would the people take it from them? And they're the owners, they're the ones who made it, they're the ones who created mm -hmm. it. Yeah, Apple will go down. I mean, if the owner of Apple and the guys who made it, the manufacturers, send out a message saying our phones are faulty, everybody will take it back to the store. And what they will await for is a refund. <laughs> Allah has a what? Has a great example. Allah is a great example. The creator of this world saying to you, it doesn't weigh in my eyes, Allah is saying this, the wing of a mosquito. That's what Allah said in the ayah, 
ولولا أن يكون الناس أمة واحدة لجعلنا لما يكفر بالرحمن لبيوتهم سقفا من فضة ومعارج عليها يظهرون ولبيوت أبوابا وسررا عليها يتكئون وزخرفا وإن كل ذلك لما متاع الحياة الدنيا والآخرة عند ربك للمتقين This دنيا because it has no weight even the disbeliever can enjoy it because it's nothing the one that means a lot to Allah Azza wa Jalla has a place in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jalla is the hereafter and that is why the believer what? He gets the hereafter. When yeah. the scholars they say, Ibn al Qayyim and others they say, "Ata al dunyawi la alaqata la alaqata lahu bil hubbi wal bughdi." The fact that Allah gives you something in this world, it has no relationship with Allah loving you or hating you. The dunya doesn't mean anything to Allah. It has no weight in the eyes of Allah Azza wa That's why a believer has this dunya, and even non-believer can have the dunya. So. If we understood that concept and we really digested that point, then we would come to live a life where we wouldn't give much weight to this dunya. I don't want people to think when I say all of this that we should just sit at home and you know not do anything and have no aspiration to achieve anything. Now what I mean by that is that when you work in this dunya, you're not working for it alone. That's what's important. Achieve in this dunya whatever you want to achieve. Become what you want to become in this world, but you do it not the, on the expense of the hereafter. That's my message. You don't give your heart and mind to this dunya on the expense of the hereafter. And if you do achieve something in this world, doesn't show or no, nor does it indicate that you have gained the love of Allah Azza wa Nor does it indicate that Allah hates you. Nor does it indicate that Allah Azza wa hates you because He gave you all of this wealth. It can be and it can't be. It can be either of the two. But what really matters is, what's your intention? How, did you, how do you observe this dunya? Allah says about the disbelievers, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يَأْكُلُونَ وَيَتَمَتَّعُونَ They eat and they are enjoying themselves. That's all the world is for them. Eat, drink, sleep and, wait and go to work again. Eat, sleep and drink. That's all it is for them. A believer is not like that. The believer knows this world's meaning is وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That you live this world because you know Allah wa ta'ala created you to come to this world and to worship Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to associate partners with Him. That's why when they said, you know, when they died, the, the people of istiqama, Allah said to them, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا That's where they were then told, أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't be scared. Don't be nervous. Don't be anxious. And you know, it's amazing. When you don't connect yourself to this dunya too much and you don't give the dunya everything, okay, it doesn't hurt you when the hard times come because you're not connected to it. The heart is not too attached to it. It's when you attach your heart to it and your life becomes about this dunya, it hurts you when you, things don't go the way that you want it to go. And it pleases you when things go according to how you want it. Like Allah wa Taala, He says that about the munafiqeen that they are the ones ida u'atu minha rabu wa illa mi'atu minha ida hum yasqatun. When they're given what they want, they're happy. When they're not, when they don't get what they want, they are angry. A person who's like that is because he's connected himself to the dunya too much and so much that there's nothing else for him other than this. So if he loses it, he gets depressed, anxieties. And now that the world has reached the pinnacle of you know, uh, scientific discoveries, the world's reached the pinnacle of development. The increase in mental illnesses has grown. The increase on of anxieties, the increase of depression, the increase of all of these illnesses, why? Because people have connected themselves to what? Materialism. Materialistic things. And they've dis detached themselves from that which was important, which was their, their ruh, their spiritual side. And now their spirit, their, their qalb is dehydrated. And from that they are, because they're having suicidal thoughts um, and etc. The other day I was watching a show and then one, one of them, was, he's a famous guy. Uh, in the famous scene, and he, he, he's talking about, and he's, he's, he's been spoken, he's a man who's been spoken about right now, 
Like, you know, he's famous like that. Everyone's talking about him. He's got a fight coming up. And so he's talking about in his, uh, uh, how he had suicidal thoughts. He was what, the heavyweight champion, undisputed heavyweight champion, never been knocked out. Knocked out, I think, 19 or 18, you know. But Adalik, look, he has what? Suicidal thoughts. He's like, every single day when I wake up, I have suicidal thoughts. I don't want to live anymore. You have to ask yourself, what is it that made this person feel like this? It's all based upon the perception of this world and its reality is different from how a mu'min and a believer looks at it. You know the famous hadith about Ibrahim ibn Adham and Abu Yusuf when they both went together and they went to the, uh, they went to the uh, edge of the ocean and they started to both dip in their bread. They had dry bread, so they started dipping it in until it gets moist and then they eat it. And then they say to each other, both of them say to each other, um, Ibrahim ibn Adham says to Abu Yusuf, uh, he says, لو كان الملوك وأبناء الملوك If the kings and the children of the kings were to know ما نحن فيه من النعيم والسرور The happiness and the joy that we're going through لجالدون عليه للسيوف They would have taken their swords out and they would try to take away the, away the happiness from us. But you see, dipping that bread into the ocean and the heart and its feeling, it shows you that it's not necessarily to have wealth which makes you happy. You know, uh, there's a story of a man happened in Somalia. He owned a market, he owned a shop. He owned a shop. And he was the owner of the shop and he employed a couple of people and subhanAllah, you know, his employees, I mean, of course, his employees, he wasn't giving them much, a lot, because the price over there back home, Somalia is not that much. But they worked for him loyally. You know, loyalty was high. One day, he locked his shop, as he always does, and he started to count the money. How much he made today. He couldn't count the money because there was outside the shop, there was one of the employees who was sleeping there snoring. So he didn't know who it was. He could hear the snoring. And he's counting the money. So he opens the shop, comes out and he looks at who's sleeping. He wakes him up. He said, what are you doing here? So he tells him that, you know, he doesn't have a place to go to. This is where he sleeps. Uh, or, you know, and if he did try to go to where he lives, it's going to take him so much money to come. So he just sleeps here. And he goes to work from here. And, he, and then it hit him because he's the one who owns the shop. He's the one who's counting the money that's made. And he's the one who's stressed so much. This man is, is not, he's sleeping in the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the porch of the shop. Just simple life. He's not stressed. No hardship. No depression. He's the one who's got the money. But that he's stressed. So this is a sign. This is indication that uh, it's Allah has how Allah wa Taala treats your heart. I mean, we know that Subhanallah. You mentioned uh, a, short, a short while earlier that Allah doesn't. It's not based upon what Allah gives you, whether or not you're loved by Him, and that's why you see sometimes the worst of people have maybe sometimes the most money. Uh, but we know that. Allah obviously is the Lord of everybody. He's the Rabb of everybody. He culture, he cultivates and nurtures everybody. But we know that he, this special tarbiyah, this special cultivation is of giving us hidayahs only for those who he loves. So you may not have been given wealth, but if you've been given this hidayah from him, this guidance, this is a sign that Allah loves you. Not necessarily <coughs> that you become a millionaire and have the latest sports cars, but if you've been given the this guidance and you've been chosen by Allah, this is ultimately a sign of Allah's love, not the wealth necessarily. Yes, yeah, like oh Muhammad, you can't guide whoever you wish, but Allah guides whoever He wills, and Allah knows who deserves to be guided. So if a person realizes the value of uh, the value of guidance and what he's been given. I remember I went back to, my, back to Somalia and my Sheikh he requested for me to buy to get him a, a manuscript. When I went back to Somalia, he asked me to get him a manuscript. And the manuscript was a ta kitab by Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasir Saudi. It was a risala on the issue of itilaf, unity and not to dispute one another and to di differ. So uh, I think the risala is called Risala to Fihati Tiba Kalibat al Muslimina wa Adam Tafarruk wa Lakhtilaf, something like that. 
So he asked me for a manuscript. I researched, I researched, looked for it, looked for it, because I was in Qasiba at that time. So I found it in a markaz in Riyadh. I found it in a markaz in Riyadh. When I found it, and I called the sons of Abdullah Nasr Saudi and they helped me and whatever. We got the manuscript. And I went to the Sheikh. And there was an amount of money that I also had. And I also had the manuscript. So I went to the Sheikh. I gave him the money first that I planned for him and others. And the reason I'm telling this is because of something that really touched me from it. And I also gave him the manuscript. Before I gave him the money, I gave him the money. It was in an envelope. Wallah, he took the envelope, he put it to the side. When I gave him the manuscript, the joy and the happiness I saw in his face, I did not see when I gave him the money. And he said something to me. He said to me, if today could be a celebration, it would have been a celebration for me. He said, the, the manuscript that he got. If it could be considered a celebration today, he would have celebrated this day. The hunger and the, the, the need that he had for that manuscript. And that, that's it. So, the, like, no, wor no worth was it to him, the money. No value did it hold for him. Another funny story with that she same sheikh was that, you know, he, he orders uh, manuscripts to be sent from him from Turkey. From the Makatib Islamia from Turkey, they sent him manuscripts. They sent it to him. So, it was brought to his attention that they're overcharging him. <laughs> they're taking too much money from him. And that he, this money shouldn't be spent towards the manuscript. It could, it could be reduced. And the love he has for, for, for the, the manuscripts that have been sent to him. And he was like, he's like, no, I don't want it. Whatever they ask, we'll, just, we'll find a way to we'll collect money. He doesn't even have money. We'll find a way to collect money and send it to them. It shows you that what means more to the righteous people is Akhirah, as Allah said in the beginning of the verse that we mentioned, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Jazakallah khair for coming on today, inshaAllah. And also to the viewers, hopefully you can put this into practice and try to always re remind ourselves and yourselves on the importance of focusing and living and setting the right priorities in this life. And until next time, inshaAllah, same time, same place, I leave you as always with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.